Hey, welcome to the second part of my mini dark mode crash course. Today, we're gonna cover accessibility and effects. One is going to make our dark mode designs more accessible to a wider group of people, especially ones with vision problems. And the other is simply gonna make them look cool. But before we get to the cool, remember that accessibility always has to come first. Let's start with the basics. All of the important UI elements and all the text that is necessary for the user should always be accessible. Always. That means they need high enough contrast, size and white space. But here's where it gets tricky. Above a certain contrast level, both dark and light modes become an eye strain for most users. So instead of sacrificing fidelity for contrast or the other way around, we should enable an option for super high contrast mode in our designs. So what is this super high contrast? Well, let me explain. It's a standard of black backgrounds and white and yellow text. It often also enlarges most of the on-screen UI elements to make them more readable. This standard for users with vision problems is actually recommended for all of the government websites across the continent. The general rule is to use white for regular text and yellow for everything that can be activated, like links, buttons, and so on. In this mode, avoid shadows, thin lines, and transparencies. It should be as utilitarian as possible to achieve maximum readability. But of course, having this as the only option is not enough. Super high contrast should be available as a switch or a toggle, and you can even make versions like that of your projects for the portfolio to show you keep it in mind. But for your regular dark mode shots, the ones using a couple of layers of brightness to show depth, remember to keep your white text at around 80 to 90% brightness. That will reduce the contrast a little while still keeping it high enough to be readable. The end result is going to be more pleasant to look at for most people. The other thing worth remembering is to avoid using thin and light fonts, especially in dark mode designs. Go with regular and up for maximum legibility. Okay, now let's get to the cool. But before we talk effects, there is one important rule that you always need to keep in mind and always need to remember. If you want to use effects like transparencies, background blurs, shadows, or anything similar to that, make sure you only use them on some of the elements and not on all of them. The best approach for things like glass morphism is to use it on just the card background and not every element that is on top of that card as well. If you use it for everything, it's gonna look messy and bad and we don't want that, right? One way of making our cards a little bit more interesting is by using a radial gradient with the same color on both ends, but the outer end being a little bit darker. You can go down by 5 or 10 points of brightness. If your main background is not fully black, you can try making a gradient filled outline with a lighter shade on the top and darker on the bottom to give it a more 3D look or even try it a little bit diagonally to make it look more interesting. That one effect adds a lot of visual fidelity even though it's pretty subtle and it actually makes your design stand out and be instantly recognized as better than the previous version. This is because gradients generally look more natural and organic, of course they can't be over the top and crazy, but if you do a gradient like this, it just simply looks more natural, because if you look anywhere around you, even at my face, everything is a gradient, because the light doesn't touch every surface completely equally. So there are gradients basically all around the world, and solid flat colors don't really exist anywhere. So using a gradient simply makes it look more like everything around you, more like nature, more like the world. And yeah, we like our interfaces actually connected to the world somehow. That's why skeuomorph is most a thing. Okay, now for the extra cherry on our dark mode cake, let's do some glass morphism. The rule here is simple. Add a background blur to your main card layer first then decrease the opacity of our gradient colors. It's best to have them a little bit lighter than before for this effect to truly shine through. Make sure the more transparent part is at the bottom of the card. For glass morphism to shine, we need something in the background. The easiest and fastest thing is to use some ovals with a radial gradient similar to the card. That will give them a bit of depth and a 3D look that we want. Then simply duplicate them a couple of times, change the sizes so they don't all look the same, and place them around and under the cards. At this point, you can also tweak the opacity of the gradient and the blur value until you're satisfied. 
And once again, if you decide to go with glass morphism, don't add the effect to every UI element on the screen. Just the main card is completely fine. It's more than enough. And that concludes part two of my mini crash course on dark mode designs. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do the third part. And if you want to practice some glass morphism first, here is a nice tutorial for you. Enjoy. Cheers.